Hey there tech fans, Rick here again with another review, and today I have the MP330 Portable Power Station from our good friends over at EDL. This tiny little powerhouse weighs a little more than 7 pounds, but it has an internal capacity of 288 watt hours and can provide 330 watts of external charging capabilities for up to 9 devices at the same time. In a lot of ways, it's the perfect portable power source to keep all your thirsty portable electronics fully charged when you're out camping for a couple of days, taking a hike, or maybe you're on a long road trip with the family. Now before I get too deep into the review of the product, I always like to start with an unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and that way you'll understand exactly what you get if you buy the product. And then I'll dive into the review of the product where I explain some of the details that really separate this from other smaller portable power stations on the market. I'll take a closer look at the unit as well and show you all the connections you can actually use to charge and operate all those external devices. And then finally, I'll come back at the end and remind you of a few things that I really like about this unit that you can use to compare it to other portable power stations that you may be considering. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first pop open the box, you're gonna find a lot of stuff because they give you everything you need to charge this product right out of the box and start using it, which I love. So inside the box, you'll find the MP330 ready to go. You'll find an AC charging kit you can use at home to fully charge the unit. You'll find a DC charging kit you can use in your car. And you'll also find, which I think is really nice, a connection for an external solar panel. So you have three different choices on how you're gonna charge the unit. One of the cool features that I'll dive into a little bit more in a minute is the fact that it's a charge through device. And what I mean by that is the minute you plug it in at home to start charging it, all of the ports, the DC ports and the USB ports become active. So you can plug this into the wall outlet. And if you have other portable electronics that you're taking along for the trip, you can plug them into the unit while you're charging the internal batteries. And it provides the right power and current to those external devices to charge them at the same time. So in a lot of ways, it immediately turns into this universal charger that you can use with all your portable devices. And that's great because if you're heading out on a camping trip, you're probably bringing a lot of electronics with you, a phone, a tablet, a camera. Maybe you're bringing flashlights that are rechargeable. You can plug them all into the unit, plug it into the wall, charge the unit, charge those devices at the same time. Now the car is great as well. It charges a little bit slower in the car at home, depending on where you've started that charging cycle, maybe four or five hours, maybe a little less if you haven't used all the energy inside of it. Your car is going to take a little bit longer because it charges at a lower rate. And that's important because a lot of these units just drink as much as they can from the battery inside your car. And then you come back after the camping trip to start your car and it won't start because you've pulled all the energy out of the battery. With this one, it takes a bit of a trickle charge. So it takes longer, but it's not going to kill your battery. I love the fact that they built in an MC4 connector so you can bring a small solar panel with you, set it up next to your tent, drink into sunlight, turn that sunlight into electrons to charge the internal battery in this unit for free. So if you're out in the field, it's like a perpetual source of charging capability for all your portable devices. So all those are included with the kit. You also get a full instruction manual that tells you everything you could possibly need to know about this unit so you can get the best value out of the product. I always recommend reading through the manual because even though a lot of this is intuitive, there's a lot of features and functions you may not figure out on your own right away and the manual will explain all those to you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the power station itself. Now a power station is a pretty wonderful thing. It's essentially a really big battery that you charge up, take with you out in the field, and then use that stored energy, much like a wound spring, to charge all your portable devices. The key is, how do you charge it? How long will it hold the charge? And more importantly, how does it deliver that charge when you're out in the field to all of your portable devices? So EBL has thought through all three phases of that. So again, I mentioned the charging before. I love the fact that I can charge it at home, charge it in my car and charge it from a solar panel. Other portable power stations on the market may be uh, able to do that, but they don't include the cable. So you've got to start searching for cables and figuring out how to charge it. With this one, you have all three choices right in the box. Again, you can take them with you and charge it on the go if you need to. Another important consideration is the type of battery technology used inside of any portable power station you're considering, because that's where the energy is being stored when you charge it at home in your car or off the solar panel. And you want to make sure that once you have it fully charged and you head out in the field, that when you get to your destination, that charge is still there. You don't want to get out there and find out 60% of the charge is already gone. So the battery chemistry is super important. It also determines how long you can use the unit because a lot of battery chemistry technologies on the market don't give you a lot of charge and discharge cycles. So you may only get a couple of years out of the unit. 
This particular product uses lithium polymer or LiPo technology, which is a great battery chemistry for retention of the charge. So it's going to give you the charge out in the field that you had at home. But more importantly, it gives you a lot of charge and discharge cycles over the life of those batteries. So well over a thousand charge and discharge cycles, and that's a full charge discharge. That's not 25% use, then recharge it again. It's a full charge discharge cycle. So that 1,000 charges might expand out to three or 4,000 charges if you're only using 25 or 30% in your camping trip. So really good battery technology internally. And the last thing is once you have this charged battery out there in the field on your camping trip, how do you deliver that internal charge to all of the electronics that need to charge and operate off the unit? Well, EBL has built in every possible connection that you could need out in the field to operate things like fans or lights or charge your phone, charge your tablet, uh, run a camera, charge batteries in your drone. So every option is there. And I'll start with the AC. So there's a single AC port in the front that can draw up to 300 watts of external energy. So you can plug it a large light, a fan. You can use any kind of charger you plug at home, plug it into that unit. The important thing about the AC on this one, which again, a lot of other portable power stations don't provide, is that this has a pure sine wave output, which is really important for some of the more sensitive electronics. A lot of other portable power stations in the market use a modified sine wave, which works okay if you're running a motor or something like that. But if you plug in sensitive electronics to a modified sine wave, it can cause all kinds of problems with that technology. There's DC connections as well right over here. So you've got a standard 12 volt, 10 amp output, which is essentially the same kind of connection you have in your car and you can draw 10 amps off that. So anything you plug into your car adapter, you can plug in directly there and you can draw up to 10 amps out of it. You'll also find two barrel connections over there that are 5521s. Now there are cables available that plug in there to convert that 5521 to all kinds of charging cables for like DVD players, some cameras, some laptops. So you can find a cable to charge directly off there or there are cables available that convert that 5521 to another convenience outlet like this. So you could essentially find two of those cables, plug them in, and have three convenience outlets that you can draw from at the same time. And then the third circuit inside here is the USB connections on the front. And that's where this unit really excels because most of the stuff you're going to want to charge out in the field are things like phones, tablets, portable game consoles, cameras, drone batteries. And those require very specific USB connections, both in the connection type and the topology of connection between those devices. And I'll explain that now. So there are two basic connection types with any USB charger you own today. The older style, which is USB-A, the larger one, and the newer style, which is USB-C. This has both of those connection types on there. But the important thing is on the USB-A side of the house, there's a standard USB charging uh, current and voltage, which is typically five volts at about two and a half amps. There are three connections on here that'll do that. But those connections are also what's called QC or quick charge capable, which is a unique technology. When you plug a phone or a tablet or something in that's QC capable, the minute you plug it in, the actual power station will look at that device, determine the level of charge that's needed, and quickly adjust the voltage and current from the power station to that device to quickly and safely charge it. So it's a unique handshake technology that takes place. If you don't have that capability, it's gonna charge a lot slower and it's gonna take forever to charge that phone or that tablet. So three of them, are QC 3.0, which is the latest standard out there. So anything you've got that charges through the QC standard, you can plug it in. The power station will individually recognize those devices, make the adjustments needed to safely and quickly charge them. There's also a USB-C connection on there. Now, USB-C has a quick charging capability as well. It's called PD or power delivery. It does exactly the same thing for any device that's PD capable. A lot of the Apple products are PD capable, a lot of the portable game stations. When you plug those into that USB-C port, it does a handshake with the device and again, adjust the voltage and current to charge it safely and quickly, which is pretty cool. The last thing I'll mention is that QC port is PD 60 watts, which is an incredible amount of current to provide through a USB-C port. And that means a lot of your laptops, the bigger tablets, things that really draw a lot of thirsty electronics that need to be charged with that higher current, you can charge out of that port. So that's pretty cool. And then the last thing is you've got a Qi charger on the top. So if you've got a phone or a tablet, anything that charges through a wireless connection, you can pop it on the top here and charge that while you're using all the other ports. And that's a five watt charger on the top. So they give you, again, pretty much every connection topology you'd need to charge it to your heart's content. So any device you're bringing out in the field, no worries whatsoever charging it off this particular product. And again, at the end of this, I'll go through some of the things that really make it stand out, but I think a lot of what I've just described really separates it from most of the other portable power stations on the market, especially ones that are smaller like this. So if you stay tuned next, I'll take a closer look. I'll show you all the ports and again, explain the current voltage you can drain from those when you connect things up. And then I'll come back at the end and point out four or five things that really separate the MP330 from other portable power stations I've reviewed. <laughs> I like it an awful lot.
The EBL MP330 portable power station features a high impact plastic case, which makes it lightweight and very durable. They've also integrated rubber bumpers in the outside corners that are designed to absorb any shock from rough handling and not pass that along to the electronics inside. On the top of the unit, you'll find a nice wide handle. That's a locking handle. It'll stay in whatever position you leave it. And there's a rubberized surface on the bottom, which makes carrying this and lifting this very comfortable. There's also a Qi charging pad on the top that you can use to wirelessly charge any device that adheres to the Qi standard. You'll simply turn the unit on, turn on the USB, and this charging pad becomes active. You can drop the device on there to start the charging. That's a five watt internal charging pad. On the top front, you'll find a courtesy light. It has two settings, either light or SOS, and you can vary between those by tapping this button. On the one side of the unit, you'll find a cooling fan and on the other side, ventilation slots. When this unit's drawing a lot of current during charging or you're drawing a lot of current out of it, that fan will turn on, draw air across the electronics to keep them at a comfortable temperature, and that's totally normal, and it's thermally controlled. On the bottom of the unit, you'll find four rubber feet that are great for keeping it in position when you set it down. They also protect the surface you set this down on. On the front of the unit is where you'll make all your connections. On the upper left hand corner is a main power button that turns the unit on. And each of these circuits have a different power button that you can use to turn them on individually. In the upper right hand corner is the light button again to go between light or SOS. And you'll find an input port right there that's used with all three of the charging kits. The AC charging kit when you're home, DC charging kit in your car, or the solar panel charging kit. You'll plug the one end of the cable in here, the other end into whatever power source you're going to use to charge the unit. Now, three circuits down the bottom, again, are individually controlled. DC, just like in your car, USB, just like a home charger, and AC, just like plugging into a wall outlet. The AC provides 120 volts at 60 hertz, and the key thing is it's a pure sine wave output, just like in your home. A lot of other portable power stations use a modified sine wave that doesn't really work well with some of the sensitive electronics. And you can turn that on just by tapping that button once the unit is powered up. It's a three-pronged grounded outlet. The DC portion is just like in your car. It's a standard courtesy outlet, so anything you plug into your car, you can plug in here. The courtesy outlet is 12 volts at 10 amps. There are two 5521s as well that are 12 volts. Each of these are 5 amps. And the 5521 barrel connector is a standard in the industry. There are cables available to convert that to most charging cables for laptops, portable DVD players, and other devices. Or you can find a conversion cable to turn that into another courtesy outlet and have three separate courtesy outlets on the DC side. The USB is in the center. When you turn that on, you have a choice of three full-sized USB-A ports right there that are QC-enabled, meaning if you've got a device connected to it that's a QC device, that port will recognize what that device needs. It'll check the current and voltage and adjust that correctly to charge it safely and quickly. Below that is a, is a USB-C connection, and that's a PD connection as well, which is power delivery. So when you connect up a power delivery device to that, it'll recognize that it's a PD device that'll adjust the voltage and current to safely and quickly charge that device. That's also a 60 watt output, which means you can use that with most laptops, drone batteries, larger tablets, things that require a little extra current out of that unit. Now to turn the unit on, You'll hold the power button for a couple of seconds. The display will come to life. It's a beautiful LCD display. You can see right now I'm at 50% charge level. If I turn on the DC circuit, you can see that turned on. You can see how much current you're drawing out of it. Right now it's at zero watts. Let me turn on the USB. Again, drawing no current out of that, zero watts. And finally, AC. So what's nice about that is you know exactly how much current you're pulling out of the unit by watching those displays. And you can gauge how much uh, battery power you've got left in the unit. And when you're not using these, I recommend you turn them off. So if you're only using the DC circuit, make sure these two are off because even though you're not using them, the AC circuit, because it's using an inverter, is drinking electrons off the battery, even though it's producing nothing to an external device. So you don't want to waste that power. If you're using the AC, turn that on, turn the other two off. You can use all three at the same time, but just be frugal about the way you have them on. If you're not using them, make sure you turn them off. And when you're done, you can turn the unit off by holding this button and it goes back to sleep. I hope that closer look was helpful. Now here are a few really important things to keep in mind when you're comparing the EBL MP330 portable power station to others you may be considering. And the first thing is, it's really important you find the portable power station that meets your needs. And what I mean by that is, there are larger portable power stations on the market. I've reviewed them on the channel. There are smaller ones on the market. This one is right in the middle, sort of in that Goldilocks zone between too small and too big. And the reason that's important is because if you're heading out for a couple of days of camping, or maybe you're taking a hike, or you're going out with the family for a long drive, you don't need a gigantic portable power station because even though it's got more power than this one, you're carrying a big heavy thing out in the field and nothing's worse than coming home with 80% of the charge still in that portable power station because that means you brought a big thing out in the field that you had to wrestle with the whole time you're on the camping trip and you didn't really use all the power. 
This one has 330 watts of external charging capabilities, which puts it right in that perfect zone of being portable, being light enough to take along without really having to worry about it. It gives you all the connections you need and plenty of power to last a couple of days out in the field with all those thirsty portable devices. Now, as far as the unit goes, you want to consider how you can charge it. A lot of the portable power stations in the market charge through AC connections like this one. They don't provide DC connections, so you can't really charge it in your car, you can't charge it from a solar panel, or if they provide those type of capabilities, you've got to find the cables on your own. I love the fact that I can charge this at home, in my car, off a solar panel, and they include the cables, so there's no trying to figure out what MC4 cable I need, what's the barrel connection, oh, the DC cable, i got to find one of those. They're in the kit, so when you open up the box, you can charge it at home, you can immediately take it out in the field and start using it. You can recharge it in your car, recharge it from a solar panel. I love the internal battery technology on this as well. Like I mentioned, LiPo technology is rock solid. It's been out for a long time, provides a lot of energy density in a small package, which gives you a really nice little powerhouse here in a product that weighs a little over seven pounds. And then the last thing and probably most important thing is once you have it charged and you get out in the field, what kind of connections can you make to it? Because a lot of the portable power stations in the market may provide AC output, DC output, and USB output, but you have to read between the lines. For example, on the AC side, they may provide 120 volts, but it's a modified sine wave, which works okay for some devices, but it's gonna drive some of your electronics nuts. This is a, a pure sine wave output, which means you're getting clean power just like you would at home. As far as the DC goes, we've got a standard DC output here, but they've also added two 5521s, which provides two more outlets that I can use either to convert to a convenience like that one there, or to other cables that I can use with other portable electronics. So I've got plenty of DC output. Where it really shines though is the USB output. Like I'd mentioned, there are three full-size USB-A connections that are all QC 3.0, and that's a quick charge technology for your newer phones, tablets, game consoles, things like that and it also has a USB-C connection on it which is a 60 watt PD power delivery USB-C connection which is perfect for again if you're using Apple products or other game consoles or if you've got a laptop 60 watts of USB-C power is a lot of power to be able to charge your laptop so you can pretty much connect all your portable electronics up to it and then I think the topper is the fact that they put a Qi charger up here on the roof because if you've got a wireless phone just set it down right in the top as long as it's Qi compatible it'll immediately recognize that and start charging your phone, your watch, your, your earbuds, whatever you're using that can charge wirelessly, just pop them on the top of the unit and you're good to go. So I think if you're looking for a portable power station that's small, that's portable, that's powerful, this may fit the bill for you. I use it quite often. We just went on a trip last weekend. I had it with me in the back of the car. And man, I'm telling you, I had it because once we get out in the field, the first thing I heard from the kids was, hey, my phone's getting a little low on power. No problem. Plug right in there. Matter of fact, just drop it on the top. It's a wireless charger and you're good to go. So I like it a lot. I hope you will as well. If you have any questions about this product, drop those in the comments below. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I love reviewing products like this. I'm trying to give you a good diversity of products so you can make the right choice for your needs. And uh, again, I just love talking about this technology. So thanks again for watching. And until next time, as always, <laughs> stay nerdy.